Hello, and welcome back to Future Tunes. I know it has been a little while <laughs> since we've had an episode, so as a refresher, this is where we explore the intersection of retrofuturism and animation by looking at past depictions of the future seen in cartoons. Today, we are going to be looking at the dreams of a tomorrow in the stars with a handful of space age cartoons produced in the Soviet Union. Well, many of these do not explicitly take place in the future, they do present a world that, even now, is still very far away. This is well trodden territory for us here. We've covered a lot of great Soviet animation on this series before, as well as the history of the Soviet space program. I will link to those videos throughout this one, if you do want more context on those. Uh, here, we're going to be focusing mostly on science fiction that takes place in space, and really showcases just how eclectic Soviet animation was. Before we get into that though, this and every video on this channel was made possible by our patrons over at patreon.com slash pixandportraits. This channel is not monetized, we are 100% viewer supported in exchange offer a ton of exclusive content. Our Patreon is full of similar videos, an entire series even, on both retrofuturism and animation that you can get access to for as little as 5 bucks a month and help keep videos on the channel coming out regularly. That is patreon.com slash pixandportraits. With that plug out of the way, let's head back to the future. Depictions of space and space travel in Soviet media nearly date back to the founding of the Union itself, the earliest being Interplanetary Revolution from 1924. Now we have looked at this many times before. <laughs> the subtitle is an event very likely to happen in 1929, just five years later. It follows a cosmonaut who travels through space, destroying capitalists and spreading communism across the universe. Obviously, this didn't happen, it goes without saying, uh, but some pretty radical and absurd science fiction. The same could be said for the similar film, Alita, also from 1924. In both of these, we see very cartoony depictions of space, with uh, different kinds of aliens and really no real effort to accurately portray space travel, which is to be expected given the time. For a slightly more grounded approach, we have 1936's Cosmic Voyage. It takes place a decade later and follows the first crewed space mission to the moon. Some pretty amazing special effects and theories here, uh, from the design of the spacecraft to the incredible takeoff sequence. The sets are great, uh, same with the costumes, I love this period where spacesuits resembled Victorian deep sea divers, so good. This is also among the first film depictions of space travel that attempted realism, uh, based on what was understood at the time. As such, we see weightlessness when the crew is in space, there are no Martians or aliens here either. Uh, the struggle or story revolves around the very real issue of running out of oxygen or becoming trapped while exploring an unknown terrain. Great stuff. The Brumberg sisters would take a similar but animated trip to the moon with 1953's Flight to the Moon. Its depiction of space travel and the moon are in line with cosmic voyages, including weightlessness and the curved launch ramp. A pretty similar spaceship design and scenes on the moon's surface as well. Moving away from space and traditional animation, we have a puppet film, 1965's Jack and the Robot. This was directed by Heino Pars, who was instrumental in establishing puppet animation in Estonia. We are seeing some of his work here with Little Scooter. In Jack and the Robot, Pars took on artificial intelligence and automation in what appears to be a futuristic society. It is centered mainly on a school, where the chalkboard is a display that responds to inputs from the students, who write with the help of these machines that look kind of like drinking birds, seemingly telepathically. The teacher moves through the room in this pod thing. Uh, one student, Jack, builds a robot to assist him in his day-to-day -day tasks, but it frequently, and comedically, malfunctions. That doesn't stop Jack from sending the robot to school in his place, where it short circuits and nearly blows up. Some great ideas and puppetry here. So much more was known about space travel when our next film was produced, Lev Shikaliohov's On Your Marks from 1979. This is post-Sputnik, Laika, and even post-Humans in Space. On Your Marks is a Belarusian film that I think can be considered as an example of space madness. 
This is a trope that has been used in a lot of movies and TV shows. Basically, people who spend too much time in space eventually lose their minds, usually violently, on accounts of their isolation. Here, it is much softer and more contemplative. An astronaut remembers his childhood dreams of going to space after returning from a mission. Gradually, he disassociates and flows off into space with his past self. Really great vibe here uh, that transitions between different times and environments fluidly, alternating from warmth and nostalgia to anxiety and even existential dread. Awesome soundtrack as well that complements the mood. Can't recommend this one enough. The last piece I'd like to look at comes from Armenia. We actually have an entire episode dedicated to Armenian animated futurism, specifically around Lev Atomanov and Robert Zahakians. What you are seeing here is Planet 888, directed by Vladimir Malion. It follows two astronauts who discover a planet that has been destroyed by war. They use futuristic tech to scan it and bring it back to life. Uh, these include a sort of interactive tablet, a multi-hosed vacuum, a uh, data orb that shows the history of the planet, creating lakes out of a hose attached to their ship. Uh, life just grows out of that. This was when the Cold War was heating up again, and it's pretty on the nose with this message. Some mind-blowing animation here. I just love the little details, like the use of textures when the ship lands on the planet, uh, how the astronaut's breath is drawn, great little flourishes. Like On Your Marks, the vibe here is pretty wild. It is wordless, but creates an eerie atmosphere using erratic sounds, music, and just these amazing visuals. Absolutely incredible work. Now, this was not meant to be exhaustive. I know there is probably a ton I missed, so feel free to chime in in the comments if you have any recommendations. All of these are available here on YouTube. I will post links in the description, so let me know what you think. If you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't, and if you have the means again, please consider supporting us on Patreon. We have series like Feature Film, which is just like this, only for movies, Century of Schlock, Animating the Board, and that's just the animation content. Tons of stuff around nostalgia as well that you can get access to for as little as 5 bucks a month and help keep the channel going. That is patreon.com slash pixelportraits. As always, thank you so much for interest in this channel, and thanks for watching. See you in the future.